Here at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research in Washington, D.C., new methods and techniques of medical investigation are constantly being tested and applied. Among these is an important innovation in the field of nuclear medicine, which has recently been put into service, the whole body counting facility. This equipment was sponsored by the Armed Forces Special Weapons Project. The growing use of radioisotopes in medicine and industry, accentuated by the fallout threat of nuclear weapons, has made the measurement of low-level radioactivity in man of paramount importance. It has become essential that we know the dynamic levels of activity in man and the effect of the International Nuclear Energy Program on these levels. Prior to the construction of the first whole body counter by Dr. Ernest Anderson and his group at the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, total body burdens of radioactivity were estimated in two ways. From the quantity excreted or from a small sample surgically removed for analysis. These methods assumed prior knowledge of the rate of accumulation, excretion, and the body distribution of the radioisotope. It was therefore desirable that man be measured directly. The human counter at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research is a liquid scintillation counter. The solution is contained within a six-foot cylinder surrounding the patient except at the ends. It employs an organic scintillator dissolved in about 150 gallons of toluene. Gamma photons emitted from the individual cause scintillations within the detecting solution. These are then observed by 30 5-inch photomultiplier tubes arranged in six rows and spaced 60 degrees apart around the tank periphery. Suspended on a track, the entire detector tank can be rolled into its steel shield, which is fabricated from 5 and 1 half inch thick armor pipe and weighs about 12 and a half tons. Let's follow these individuals through the routine process used to determine the total natural and acquired radioactivity in their bodies. First, a medical and radiological history is taken. Then the patient must change into hospital clothes to be sure that no radioactivity is present other than that within the individual. Occasionally, a shower bath is required to remove activity from the skin surface. It is essential that wristwatches be removed as the activity in the luminous dial is many times that normally present in the body. The individual is weighed and measured so that later correlations can be made based on these physical factors. The patient then lies down in the carrier and is automatically moved forward into the counter. There is a positive control button to press if the individual wants to be removed. The counting time is short. For statistical accuracy, only two 100-second counts are required. The electronics consist essentially of a two-channel analyzer which permits separation of the high and low energy gamma radiation. Signals from the 30 photomultiplier tubes are amplified through two stages. By the use of dual coincident circuits, the inherently high background of liquid scintillators is decreased by a factor greater than 10. 
This provides a resultant stability which permits detection and analysis on scalars and a count rate meter of levels of activity as low as 10 counts per second with good accuracy in 100 seconds of counting time. By increasing the duration of counting, levels of one one thousandth of a microcurie can be measured. As large numbers of people have been measured, the so-called normal ranges for cesium-137 and potassium-40 are known. Potassium-40 is part of the natural background radiation and is present in small amounts in everyone. Cesium-137 is one of the isotopes accumulating in man due to the atomic energy program. It is apparent that very large numbers of people can be evaluated with great accuracy and at a minimum loss of time, both for the patients and the research staff. To identify absolutely any particular isotope responsible for increased radioactivity in people, the iron room with its associated sodium iodide crystal and multi-channel analyzer was constructed. The iron room erected from armor plates seven inches thick measures about 12 by six by seven feet. Overlapping plates cover all joints. Access is provided by this hydraulically operated door weighing approximately eight tons. Constructed to provide shielding to reduce background the 50-ton room permits measurement of low-level gamma activity. Four three-inch photomultiplier tubes optically coupled to the sodium iodide crystal detect the scintillations from gamma photons incident upon the crystal. The associated electronics consist of a preamplifier located adjacent to the crystal housing and a shielded cable which conveys the signal from the preamplifier and the high voltage to the phototubes. Leaving the iron room through a shielded orifice, the cable connects with the high voltage control panel and the amplifier of the 100 channel analyzer. The high voltage control panel provides individual voltage control to each of the four phototubes. Pulses from the phototubes are sorted according to amplitude by the converter and registered through the address scaler and stored in the magnetic core memory of the analyzer. After a predetermined counting period, the information is read out of the memory, channel by channel, and the total count accumulated in each channel is recorded by the scaler for analysis. A permanent record is provided by the Victor printer. For immediate reference, the information can also be displayed on a five inch oscilloscope. To accommodate the 8-inch crystal phototube assembly, we have modified a medical fluoroscopy stand. This permits sufficient mobility to position the crystal so that an adult patient can be included in the field. Analysis of the data will permit both qualitative and quantitative interpretation. This combined facility has three primary objectives. The first is that of monitoring the levels of radioactivity in man. This is a long range project. It necessitates the counting of large numbers of people in order to study variations in radioactivity with regard to age, sex, weight, diet, and place of residence throughout the world. The second objective is diagnostic. The equipment can give a vital evaluation of any person who may have accidentally ingested, inhaled, or otherwise acquired an unknown amount of a radioactive element. The patient is quickly and accurately measured, and with specific knowledge of the total body burden, he can be given the necessary medical treatment. This diagnostic potential is of great importance in view of the ever-increasing number of nuclear reactors and the wider use of radioisotopes. Finally, as a medical research tool, the capability of these instruments to accurately measure small quantities of radioactive material opens a new frontier in biological tracer studies.
Not only can man be directly measured, but its great sensitivity permits measurements of small quantities of activity in large volumes of any biological specimen. It further enables a research physician to administer smaller amounts of activity to a human being, thereby minimizing radiation exposure. The whole body liquid scintillation counter and the iron room are in active use at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. With the availability of these unique instruments and a well-trained staff to operate them, the Institute has opened a new frontier in medicine.